Welcome back to my round five game from the Fujaira Blitz Tournament. In this one, I'm playing Grandmaster Walter Arincibia Rodriguez from Cuba. And he's actually a former World Junior Champion. Uh, he won the World Junior Championship in 1986. So we, we sit down, we shake hands, and then immediately we have some clock trouble. Neither of us can seem to figure out how to start the clock. And yeah, sometimes chess clocks can be confusing. There's a lot of different models. All of them have like different types of buns. The Arbiter does some magic trick, presses a bunch of buns, and then finally we get going and we start the game. So pawn e4. And I decide to play a Sicilian. And just settling in here. And he goes into an open Sicilian. And I'm playing one of my favorite variations within the Sicilian defense. This is the Taimanov. And he looks away for a moment, deciding what to do. Ends up going for knight c3 and bishop e3. And then a very trendy line, queen to f3. Now, I'm prepared for this. I play knight to f6. And very soon, I mean, this line has a tendency of getting very, very sharp. Because uh, White's idea is to quickly castle queenside and then build up a lot of pressure uh, in the center and eventually on the king side. So he does castle. I play knight e5. And this is still preparation for me. I'm attacking the queen, centralizing the knight. He plays queen g3. And I play pawn b5. Still theory. He plays pawn f4. And here I hesitate because I had a, a almost brief lapse of my memory. I was trying to remember between knight g6 or knight g4 uh, which move to play. I realized if I play knight g6, e5, and my knight can't get to g4. So yeah, I take a moment, I play the correct theoretical move, knight e to g4. And now I'm immediately hitting the bishop on e3. And I'm still in preparation, even though I took a moment there to remember. Uh, he goes for e5 here, and I very quickly take the bishop. And after he takes back, I play pawn to b4. And this is a really nice counterattacking move. And it's still within opening preparation on my part. Uh, I've had this a few times in online games. Uh, it's been a while since I had this exact position. But there was a time about three years ago I had this opening twice in the same week, and I made a couple YouTube videos about it. Uh, once was against Christopher Yu, who I don't think was a grandmaster at the time. And then I had another game in the same position uh, a day or two later. So I was really happy to get this position against my opponent, even though this is not a line I've reviewed recently. The idea for black is I'm counterattacking the knight on c3, and if knight e4, I'm happy to trade and then get a position where it's relatively open and I have the bishop pair. And if white takes my knight on f6, then I would take back. And black is already for choice in such a position. So he takes a lot of time here trying to figure out what option to go with if he should move the knight or take my knight. And then he finally plays knight to e4. So offering the trade of knights in a slightly different way avoiding the complications with the pawns capturing. And I pretty quickly take on e4. He takes back with queen, and I play bishop to b7. At this point, I'm feeling very good. It was pretty much an opening success. Develop the light squared bishop with tempo, have the really nice long diagonal, and he has to figure out what to do with his queen. So he hesitated there for a brief moment, and then plays queen to e1. Yeah, it's a slightly passive move, queen e1. One idea is maybe to eventually transfer the queen to the king side, but I'm feeling very good. I play bishop to c5, 
developing actively. And my plan in the position is very simple. I just want to castle kingside, connect my rooks, and then as quickly as possible start storming my pawns on the queen side. Really want to get this move in a5 and a4. He starts with knight b3, attacking my bishop. I move back to e7, and he plays bishop to d3. Now, when I had played bishop c5, I was kind of anticipating this knight move, and I thought that even though it looks like I wasted time moving my bishop to c5 and then back, I can use this knight on b3 as fuel for my pawn storm. And here, uh, yeah, I go for pawn a5, which just prepares to play pawn a4, hitting the knight with tempo. And my eventual dream is to pawn storm far enough where I can open up files on the queen side and get to the, the white king. So he plays bishop to e4, uh, trying to simplify a bit, offering the trade of bishops. And this is probably a logical move because it's hard for me to avoid the bishop trade. And usually trades will favor the side who is getting attacked because then it can be harder to, uh, to keep the attack going. So I'm trying to figure out what to do here with the, the bishop tension. I could take, but I start with pawn to a4, attacking the knight. He plays knight to d4. And again, I take a bit of time here because there are a handful of options for me. I could take the bishop on e4, but I was also considering b3 or a3 to just try and induce some weaknesses in white structure. Ultimately, I decide to castle kingside. And uh, then he very quickly takes on b7. I recapture. And then he plays king to b1. So trying to just weather the storm on the, the queen side. But I'm happy that I got in casting kingside because now my other rook can be ready to join the party. And here I'm still deciding what move I want to start with. I could go for a3 to try and attack the dark squares, but the issue with a3 is after b3, it's hard for me to get my dark square bishop into play. So I end up going for b3, which combines a lot better with my dark square bishop because my pawns aren't light squares. The diagonal for the bishop opens up, and it's pretty much impossible here for white to prevent the files from opening. Inevitably, there are going to be some trades of pawns. And with pawn b3, this is basically a pawn sacrifice. So he takes on b3, I take back, and then he takes with knight. So he won two pawns, I won one pawn. I'm now down a pawn, but I have the two half open files on the queen side to work with. These a and b files are very nice for my queen and hopefully both rooks to access. And this is another moment where I'm taking time because the move I really wanted to play here was rook takes a2 uh, to sacrifice a rook and after king takes, play rook a8 check. But um, it was a difficult line to calculate because after king b1, white takes, wasn't sure if I have enough compensation for sacking the material. So there are other options for black to consider here. I was looking at queen a6 or queen a7, creating a battery, also bringing my kingside rook in to c8 or b8. And uh, it's one of these positions where I know I should be better, but I'm kind of spoiled for choice and I have to find some kind of plan or just go for the media tactics. So at this point, I've actually already fallen lower on time than my opponent. But I figured it is a critical moment, makes sense for me to try and play the best move here. And eventually I play rook f to b8, which actually turned out to be a mistake. Even though I was just trying to improve my worst place piece in the position, uh, there were some better options for me, which I can show in analysis after this game. And he plays this move queen to e2, which turns out to be a very bad mistake. And in this position, I have one single move to achieve a winning position. And I was smelling blood here, and the move I was fixated on was rook takes a2, which uh, of course was on my mind the previous move. 
And I was trying to calculate what happens after king takes a2, and then queen takes b3, and then the king goes back to b1. And can I generate enough play like bishop a3, there's rook d2. I was also looking at branches where I throw in rook a a check. And I ended up burning a lot of time here, not arriving at a definite conclusion. And the more time that passed, the less sure that I was about sacrificing the rook. So I ended up playing a safer move, queen a7. But we can see by the eval bar, this kind of gave away my whole advantage. It gives white time to defend with knight c1. I play bishop a3, trying to throw the whole kitchen sink at my opponent. But he plays rook d2. And even though I have all my pieces in prime attacking position on the queen side, it's really hard to crack white setup. b2 and a2 are well defended. I start with rook b7 here to try and double up rooks on the b-file, but he was pretty unfazed. He plays rook hd1, attacking my pawn on d7. Now d7 is defended, so um, I'm not too concerned about that just yet. I double up my rooks on the b-file. He plays knight b3, I play bishop to b4, and he's still maintaining uh, decent control on the queen side. Uh, with bishop b4, I'm saving my bishop, attacking the rook on d2. And he plays rook to c2. I shuffle back my rook to a8, attacking a2. And he returns his knight to c1. So it's actually a really frustrating position because I keep trying to poke and prod, but white is still very solid. And keep in mind, I'm still down a pawn, and it's not clear what attack I actually have in the position. So I'm really just looking for ways to keep the pressure. I play queen a4 here, which looks like an aggressive move, but I'm not actually sure what it does. Uh, just trying to optimize a queen. He centralizes his queen. I drop back to b5, defending my rook on b7. And then he hesitates here. He was about to move his rook from d1, but then he starts thinking again and decides to move his queen to c4, offering the queen trade. And here I definitely don't want to trade queens. I really want to keep any chances of attack alive. I drop my queen back to b6. And yeah, we're in a position where it's kind of hard for either side to make progress. He was about to move his rook there, but takes his hand back and thinks some more. But meanwhile, we're both very low on time, both below 20 seconds. He plays queen e4, centralizing the queen again. I play rook a b8, tripling up on the b-file. He plays knight to b3, useful square to neutralize the b-file. I move my rook back to the a-file. He plays queen d4. I avoid the queen trade with queen a6. And he plays knight c1, defending a2. And I play this move h6, making some error for my king. He plays rook d3. Very useful move, preparing rook to b3 to try and exploit my bishop on b4. And I play rook b7. He plays rook b3. I play queen to f1, uh, finally intruding white's position. And then he plays queen to c4. And I touch my bishop, not realizing my queen was attacked. It was touch move. Oh no, my queen. And at this point, I realize I'm just dead. I resign. The game ends super abruptly in what was a kind of disappointing finish, especially given the fact I had a great opening, great middle game attacking potential. But uh, yeah, this is the nature of Blitz. This is also the nature of over the board Blitz, where if you touch a piece, you have to move it. I usually don't make such mistakes, especially this was just a simple queen move attacking my queen, but sometimes in chess it can be easy to overlook these things, especially with low time on the clock. So let's do analyze some of the key moments of this game. There is a lot to unpack. And starting with opening, um, it's always nice to get a bunch of prep from early on. And he actually was asking me after the game like what the theory is in this line, and I was explaining to him that in this position, it's not good for white to play e5. Uh, white should move the bishop 
from e3. The two main moves are bishop d2 or bishop to g1. But uh, it's understandable that he went for e5 not knowing the theory because this line would be good for white if black doesn't have b4. But thankfully, yeah, I played b4. And I think I first saw this idea maybe four years ago. A good friend of mine, uh, Kevin Go from Singapore, was a victim of this line from the white side. And I remember him sharing his game with me, and then I got inspired to kind of add this to my time on of preparation. So the position's already preferable for black. And the two online games I've had in this previously, my opponents have taken, and this would have been a sharper line after takes, and then takes, and then takes, and then king b1, and then takes. Uh, it gets really messy where black has a pawn on b2. Uh, but black's in very good shape here with the bishop pair and more attacking potential uh, against white's king. So yeah, he played knight e4, and I was very, very comfortable here. Now I want to zoom forward to the key tactical moment, because the position basically played itself up until this point. And this was the first critical moment where the engine did not like my move rook fb8, even though it looked very natural. Uh, what I could have done here, it was started with queen a7, and after knight to c1, the engine really likes the idea of putting the rook on c8, and then pretty much regardless of what white does, the plan is to sacrifice the rook for the knight and then take on a2, and supposedly there's just overwhelming compensation for black uh, in this position. So I made a small misjudgment putting my rook on b8, but then after queen e2, this was my biggest missed opportunity of the game because I had identified the right move, rook takes a2, but I didn't pull the trigger. And this is one of these moves which I could have played intuitively, understanding that after takes, 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 white's king is just uh, getting really, really unsafe. And one idea would be after king b1, I can simply play rook a8, queen a2 is unstoppable. And this would have been um, a really, really nice position. Engine says Black's completely winning here. But uh, yeah, in the game, uh, especially with time trouble, I did not quite make the right decision going into this line. And uh, yeah, after I played Queen A7, I just didn't have such an opportunity for the rest of the game. And after a lot of dancing, uh, my opponent just fended off any sort of pressure really well. And uh, yeah, the game ended really tragically, missing the fact that his queen can move backwards. Um, to be fair though, I was already in a bit of trouble. Of course, I should have avoided the queen trade and saved my queen here. A move like queen g1 probably was best. But uh, yeah, I don't really have much attack here. White can play g3, keeping all the pawns defended. And yeah, there's still pressure against my bishop and white would be in full control. So somewhat disappointing game in round five, but definitely some lessons to take away. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have questions, leave them below. If you like the content, subscribe. Do appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next one. See you guys soon.